So, I have been discussing about uh, the slope instability and uh, discussed a lot about the infinite slopes, different conditions starting from drain conditions to the slopes having seepage, uh, you know, in the downward direction, upward direction, parallel to the slope, uh, under partial submergence, under complete submergence of mostly uh, dry sandy materials which was extended to the uh, these situations where the water table is present. And we have done detailed analysis to find out the factor of safety. Uh, these are the infinite slopes, all right. Now, in most of the situations which we uh, as geotechnical engineers uh, deal with, the slopes are of finite nature. So, now onwards I will be discussing about the analysis of finite slopes. You remember we had talked about uh, what is the difference between the infinite slopes and the finite slopes. Uh, and there we had talked about the material properties as a function of depth vary. They do not remain constant, state of stress does not remain constant in finite slopes as compared to the infinite slope where they remain constant. Uh, peculiar finite slopes could be embankments which you are making by compacting the soil mass for railway tracks, for highways, roadways, runways and so on. Runways are normally not done on the embankments. Uh, but the finite slopes could be because of uh, excavations mostly. So, here we talk, talk about two situations. One is the uh, planar failure surface. And the second one would be circular, yes, circular failure surface. So, let us begin with our discussion on uh, planar failure surface. These type of situations occur due to excavations. and excavations okay, the stratified soil deposit. All right. What is the second characteristics? This is going to be the weakest plane uh, parallel to the strata. And this could be a combination of uh, two, three planar surfaces also, maybe a combination of two to three uh, planar surfaces, all right. Uh, one of the examples of this type of situation would be uh, if I consider a slope, this is a natural soil mass, all right. This is of inclination I and the backfill here is of I prime. This happens to be the slip surface, the planar slip surface, all right. of height h. So, height is taken up to the topmost point over here. The inclination of the slip surface is assumed to be as what theta always. 
Now my question to you would be draw the free body diagram of the forces which are going to act on this. The easiest possible way would be drop a perpendicular from A and designate this as H. Now you can compute W1 easily. W2 can also be com computed. So basically I am writing this as W. So W is known. Clear? What are the other forces which are going to act on this? Given a chance, the entire soil mass or the slope would have a tendency to slide, slide down and this is what is being protected by C and phi which is getting mobilized in the system. So this is the first time I am writing C and phi which are getting mobilized. Mobilization means the entire C and phi of the material is not going to be used against instability, alright. Certain fraction of this is going to be used. That means if I say that C mobilized is equal to C over factor of safety associated with cohesion. And similarly, if I say phi m is the mobilized friction angle which is equal to tan inverse, okay, tan phi over f of phi. So I am using two factor of safeties. One is the factor of safety for cohesion, another one is the factor of safety for friction. Ideally, f c should be equal to f phi. Okay. So we are going to talk about these type of situations subsequently. Just to begin with, let us show the force of acting over here. So this is the component of Cm. Now Cm is going to act on surface BC, so multiplied by length of the BC, the surface on which it is acting. Okay. So this is BC. What are the other forces acting on the system? There has to be a reaction. So this is the reaction, let us say. And what is the relationship between the action and the perpendicular if I draw over here? This is going to be phi m. Now this friction angle mobilized is what is that we have computed from here. So factor of safety can be obtained. Factor of safety can be utilized to find out what fraction of cohesion and friction is getting mobilized. Now once this is done, uh, we know the Ws, W can be computed, okay. The only thing which we have to keep in mind is I can utilize this H and basically this is a function of H, correct. And H can be related to capital H and what else? I, yes, theta, I prime will not come to the picture. So ultimately what is that we want to prove? We want to prove that this theta critical value is the one where the failure is going to take place. So if you compute this. Uh, w will be equal to half into gamma into H into LBC. This is the one equation which I can obtain. And the second equation could be, is there relationship between H and capital H? Think. So H is also related to capital H. In what way? H can be written as AB into sin of I minus theta. Is this correct? Check it out. If this angle is I minus theta, so this H is equal to AB into sin of I minus theta. And what is capital H? AB into sin I. So these two expressions are going to help us in finding out the weight. 
is this correct? So, what we have done? Now, we can relate h to h as h upon h equal to sin i minus theta over sin i and this can be expressed as h equal to this. BC is known. I can draw this this section on a graph paper. I can find out the length. Otherwise, also I can compute the weight of the block by plotting it on a uh, piece of graph paper. That can also be done by graphically or by analytically. You can obtain it like this. Fine. Now, further, what we have to do? Let us complete the force diagram. So, how the force diagram will look like? Yes, try to complete this. We have a component of the weight and then we have a reaction and this Cm into Lbc is the cohesion force which is getting mobilized on the plane and this then becomes the R value. Is this angle known? What is the value of this angle? We have discussed several times active condition this minus phi m prove it or check it out whether it is correct or not. And what about the other included angle between the Cm value and the weight Cm and the weight what is the included angle this this is theta this is 90 minus theta. What about the third angle? Correct. I can use this relationship to obtain what relationship between W, this is of ABC, which we have obtained. So, WABC divided by sin 90 plus phi m equal to what is the principle unknown how much cm is getting mobilized i do not know so i have to obtain c value phi value i do not know even factor of safety sometimes so i have to assume and then go ahead so this will be equal to cm into lbc divided by sin of theta minus phi m What is that I am going to get from here? I am going to get the value of Cm from here. So, once you have got the value of Cm, how are you going to use this? Any idea? This Cm, if I correlate it with the factor of safety or stability number, both ways, I will prefer to use the stability number over here. So, what will be the value of stability number? Cm over gamma h. Is this okay? Just quickly compute what is the factor which you are going to get. This will be equal to 1 by 2 because of half gamma h square which is coming over there. So, this will be equal to Yes, sin of i minus theta into sin of theta minus phi m, this whole thing divided by sin i into cos of phi m, all right. So, this is the expression which we have obtained. Now, what is that you want to do by obtaining this function? You want maximum stability or you want minimum stability? Both the ways I can try. So, suppose if I want to maximize this function, so what I will have to do? 
I will have to differentiate this with respect to what? What is the principal unknown here? The principal unknown is the theta value. So that means this has to be maximized with respect to theta. So if you differentiate, what is that you are going to get? Theta will be equal to i plus phi m divided by 2. Prove this. This is okay. And this theta is normally written as theta failure. That means this is where the failure is going to take place. And at failure, what we can do is we can also assume that the value of phi is equal to phi m, the most critical condition. That means the factor of safety becomes 1. So, theta f is the slope of the critical failure surface or critical slip line. It is basically a geometrical uh, you know manipulation which has been used to obtain the uh, stability number here. I might be having uh, different types of combination of the planar surface. So, here this is one I can create a situation where you have a slope like this which again goes further and so on. Okay. Uh, this could be the typical critical surface. So, what's the, what I am going to add is one ABC followed by another ABC. If it is a multi layered system, what is going to change? The value of CM and phi m. So, there are two ways of doing this analysis either you average out the C and phi for different layers by using their thickness or if you want to be very precise, then the slip surface should be passing through the each section and then ultimately what you have to do? You have to do piecewise computation of CM into LBC which is acting on the base followed by the weights, choice is yours. Mm -hmm.